Well, we just got home from slaughtering two pigs. pigs. They weren't hogs. You know, I don't know the technical term, but everything in that category I call a pig. They're where yeah. bacon comes from. Right. Uh, we took a camera with us. We were not invited to film. We were happy to just be invited to kind of take the experience in. We have been wanting to learn this skill for a long time. Hunting is on our long term wish to -do list. list, but it's not happening right now. Um, but uh, a close family invited us to join them and quite a few neighbors joined in and it was quite an experience. So thankfully it only took a half a day. So they're gonna process the rest of the meat in a couple of days. So we got to be involved in basically the slaughtering process, the skinning, the hanging, the gutting and all that stuff. Um, and it went well. I think anyone that's interested in getting their own meat, um, it's not pretty, you know, some no. might say it's not fun, but it's a very real experience. But yep. by doing this with people that do do this and they have the tools and the equipment and the setup, it's not what I would say traumatic, you know, we're not squeamish no. people or anything, but you see, it's just, it's just a process. And once you learn, you know, how to skin an animal and take the guts out and you know, get rid of the blood and stuff. It's just a very like kind of mechanical process. And, it's a system. And it can even be somewhat clean if you have the tools and, you know, water and the space. So it was a good experience for us. And I think we're not ready to do that yet. It's going to be a very long time, but it makes us less apprehensive or less worried to get into hunting. Or if we have the opportunity, you know, we're slowly, slowly getting the space to do stuff like that and be yep. responsible for your food. Yeah, I'm glad we went. It was not easy. We had to get up way earlier than we really wanted to, but um, makes sense. So now back to regular old back Jesse and Alyssa. Life. least favorite part always such a big mess oh yeah that's it that's the river the river of oil oh yeah oh yeah that'll do
Where's that other filter? Must be this thing. Yeah, looking right. It's got the drain. It's got the power plug. Oh boy, that could be fun. That is one seriously stubborn filter. And I have no idea. Looks like it's a horrendous, horrendous socket. Must be inch and a half or something. Wow, special tools, people, special tools. Oh, I found 30 millimeter. Of course, it's not metric. Let's see if it's inch and a quarter. I'll be dang, it is inch and a quarter. Wow. Wow. Definitely feels like I'm gonna break a super expensive piece here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> totally does not seem right. This could end really badly. see if we can get this open now. Come on. If I did it right, this should drain just a little bit, and then we can pull that filter cover off and replace the filter. If I did it wrong, it'll try to drain the entire fuel tanks, or approximately 50 gallons of diesel. All right, it stopped. That's a good sign. So I think we have to take this off, and inside there, should be a filter, something like this. And if everything goes well, I should be able just to put that new seal on there. And this truck is done. I think it's working. That's the sixth time we had to start start and stop the ignition or turn it on and off six times. I wonder if the computer knows that means we changed the fuel filters. About to find out. Let's see if I screwed this up. <laughs> I don't know. Still running. Fuel filter change required. I just did that. Well, that's one vehicle down and one, two, three to go. So, Maintenance is something that I think a lot of us struggle with. There are a lot of people out there who are very good at maintenance. And then there are also a lot of people who pay someone else to deal with it. Maybe you're one of those two people, I don't know. And I've challenged myself because Alyssa and I have been blessed with so many nice things to teach myself to maintain them 
and to maintain them as best I can. I feel like a lot of people complain in the modern era that things are no longer serviceable. Uh, they complain that things can't be repaired, that you can't find parts. And to some degree, they're right. But there's a lot of very basic, and I mean basic, maintenance that can be done on a lot of the things that we own. And the problem is, I don't enjoy it. I don't like it. It's not fun. And part of that I've learned is having the right tools, A, which I ran into today, again, I didn't have the right socket to remove the fuel filter bowl, and it's annoying, it's angering. I think there's probably nothing I hate more than bashing my knuckles on a sharp piece of rusty metal. And I've learned to get the good tools. And so we've been investing a lot in tools. I don't run out and buy every tool that I see, but I find that if you have the tool, it's the right tool for the job, the job is a lot easier. And this is kind of hard to say because it's gonna make a few people angry, but I've learned that a lot of doing a job well isn't necessarily, necessarily a lot of experience. A lot of it is having the right tool. Caveat, knowing how to use that tool, that's a whole different conversation. And that's where kind of the subtlety, the tricks of the trade, the, the experience comes in. But much like the videos that we shoot, if we had low quality camera gear, our videos would suck. It doesn't matter how good we are at telling a story, sharing what's going on, etc. cetera. Uh, so we learned that lesson as we learned to create videos to invest in ourselves. And so I'm, I'm doing the same thing when it comes to vehicle maintenance. I've never changed a fuel filter. That's not true. I changed one in the backhoe last year. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. I made a big mistake. I did not prime the filter, but that's the second, this one is the second fuel filter I've ever changed in my entire life because I never took the time to learn to do maintenance. And here we are, we've got a nice truck, we've got a nice backhoe, a nice sawmill, a nice car, minus the shark bite on the bumper. And maintenance is something that I'm trying to figure out how to do. When I say I'm trying to learn how to do maintenance, I don't mean I don't know how to do an oil change. I think those are pretty stupid proof, really. What I'm trying to figure out is how to do them well and I'm trying to set things up to make my life really easy so that when you're busy and it's cold outside and you don't wanna do maintenance, you're more likely to do it. Last year, when I tore into our backhoe that we recently acquired, I had to diagnose some electronic or electric issues and kind of diagnose wiring diagrams and try to figure these things out to get our backhoe to work well. And I feel like you're more likely to use a tool if it's running well, if it's got a lot of problems, you just don't feel motivated to use it. So last year, when I changed the oil on the backhoe, the worst thing happened. Oil went everywhere. I know if you're watching this video, you probably have a piece of equipment where the drain plug is near something else. I know some vehicles, they put them near the axle or other things and you pull the drain plug and you basically get like a 12 quart shower of filthy oil all over you, etc. And I wouldn't blame somebody if they had a vehicle like that for taking it to an oil place and saying, you know what, you deal with it. This thing is a nightmare. But in that conversation of frustration, I found something that I thought, ah, that makes so much sense. So I located these quick drain oil valves. And yeah, I bought a few because it makes so much sense that I wanted to try one. The problem is you have to change the oil to install it because it replaces the drain plug. And I had to get the oils done last year because we had so much work to do. I didn't have time to wait for these to show up. So this year, I'm investing in them to make my life a little bit easier. In a nutshell, there's a little tiny ball valve inside. And this little knob is a quarter turn ball valve. Then you can attach a hose to this nipple and without even removing the drain plug, you can attach a hose and the oil will go exactly where you want. They make several different models. This one has kind of a large nipple 
this one has a more compact nipple and so these might be the same thread pitch but they're for different applications i bought one for our backhoe and also for our subaru i've also had people tell me that you want to be careful with these valves because for example on a backhoe if you drive through brush and some things like that often that little valve can get hooked on a stick or something and you just lose all of your oil and now you toast your engine so they do have a lot of warnings on this company's website about low clearance vehicles and things and for some of these applications they actually have a very special valve that's fairly new to their lineup that actually allows the valve to be oriented in any position 360 degrees i bought that one for a friend so i'm going to send that to him what kind of gave me this idea was airplanes i've been learning to fly and spending more time around airplanes and if you think changing oil on a car is hard wait until you have to pull the cowling upper cowling and lower cowling on an airplane because there's no quick drain valve this is something that they do on aircraft they have just a valve that you turn a quarter of a turn with a hose and without having to remove any of the cowlings or anything like that you can do an oil change in a matter of five minutes which is how it should be so my goal today is to install some of these or i guess investigate installing some of these on things as i go through the oil changes it was only natural as i discovered these to ask the question can you put that on pretty much any engine and i found this little guy i found a company that is marketing these little quarter turn valves under many different brand names like Husqvarna, Steel, uh, Echo, Tecumseh, Onan, you get the idea. And they're a replacement for your drain plug on your small engines like your lawnmower or your, oh, I don't know, pressure washer or a generator, etc. And they have a small cap that you can remove. And again, you can attach a hose and Man, that's really hard to remove, which I think is good. You can attach a hose to that little nipple, and with just quarter turning the valve, you don't even have to remove the drain plug. So if all goes well today, this is going on the sawmill. So it looks like in the last year, we're just shy of 100 hours. That's pretty good. I think we'll leave the fuel filter and the fuel and oil or fuel and water separators. I think those will probably be okay. I might look up the specification, but at 100 hours, I think those are probably fine. It looks like they're recommending an oil change every 250 hours. I guess makes sense. I wouldn't argue with them on it, but 100 hours makes sense also. Um, do they have the fuel filter? It's probably every 500 maybe. Oil. So every thousand hours replace the transaxle filter and oil. Change the reservoir fluid. Replace the hydraulic filter. We did that last year. Change grease and replace seals for front wheel bearings every 500 hours. Huh, I don't see the fuel filter on there. So if this oil change goes anything like the last one, this is gonna make a horrific mess. So the drain plug is here, and there's this uh, trans or this axle guard here. <laughs> and the oil, you guessed it, it goes down through this mess. So zero fun factor and massive mess factor. So I'm hoping that we can put one of these quick drain valves here, and I can just sneak a hose on there. And then in the future, I'll be able just to turn the valve and drain the oil this direction. So this is probably going to end badly, but I'm going to try to just sneak this in there. Let's make sure it's closed. That's open and that's closed. So let's see if we can sneak this in here before all this oil drains out because quite frankly, this is just gonna be, well, it's gonna be a mess. And I'm really hoping that we have the thread pitch right. Oh, 
Yeah, mess. Mess is exactly what I would call that, but I think we may have prevented an even bigger mess because fact is there's no way to drain the oil on this piece of equipment without just making a horrific mess. All right, let me clean this up and then we'll take a closer look. So even though we made a little bit of a mess just now, putting that Fomoto valve in there, I feel like that was the lesser of the evils. So take a look at that. That's looking really good. So now we should be able to put this hose on this little nipple. We'll need to tighten this valve. And I'm pretty sure if we quarter turn that, we're in business. No more of this garbage. It's a huge mess all over the ground. And gosh, what a, this, it's like embarrassing, but there's no better way without one of these valves. All right, that mess is cleaned up. So this hose clips on there. And I bought that hose with the valve. It's kind of a mating kit. So it's not just a valve, it's also a nipple. And they provide a 90 degree nipple with this hose. Um, let's see. Try to tighten this thing down a little bit. Definitely hard to get to. That'll work. I think that's pretty close. So let's put our hose on. I think our hose is a little bit long, but we'll work with it. And the hose is cold. So it keeps trying to pop off that valve. All right, and we'll go a quarter turn. Oh yeah, we got oil. I bet it probably flows fast, faster if I pull the dipstick. All right, let's try that. Let's see if we get a little bit better flow. Oh, we're not winning any awards, that's for sure. I guess the nice thing is it doesn't all come out in a raging torrent. So you're less likely to make a huge mess. I kind of like this because I can put it in a smaller container and I can transfer it to jugs too. So we'll let this drain for a while, but I think, I think we're on to something guys. I think this is going to be a win. I don't see any issues with it hitting the frame here. And I guess the only thing I can see right now is that I'm losing the magnet that was on the back of the factory drain plug. Recently, I found out that there are oil filters that actually have magnets in them. Um, so that might be a better solution is to just replace the filter with something that's got a magnet. I don't know about you guys, but it's kind of nice to see, you know, if anything's coming out of the motor or if there's any kind of metal flake or anything in there. This drain plug's looking really good. So that makes me feel good. Just one more piece of simple diagnostics, but since you're not pulling the Fomoto out, can't look at it anymore. it's done looking to me like that hose is pretty empty so we just need to kind of drain that hose out a little bit so we'll turn that off it's looking good we'll pop the hose off here nice we can drain that hose in just a second so that worked pretty dang good I still managed to get a little bit on the ground but unlike last time I didn't put a bunch so a nice thing is you can take it out in small pails and kind of speaking to that as it pertains to aircraft i've learned recently that we can send oil off for an analysis and they actually check for different metals in the oil even very fine particulate matter and it's a great way of kind of doing diagnostics on cams and valves and pistons and rings and you know where if you're getting wear or you're getting uh, corrosion where is it coming from so the nice thing about this quarter turn system is that if you had a fleet of vehicles uh, you could totally just do a sample and you wouldn't have to drain the entire oil system to do that all right uh, I got the filter done while that was draining uh, matter of fact, it is way slower. So uh, don't do this if you're in a hurry, I suppose. But um, I think that in this instance, the lack of a massive 
oil spill justifies taking a little bit longer. But the good news, like I said, I can change the filter and I can do other things while this is draining. I'll take that over trying to mop up an oily, messy mess. Something else Fumoto includes with some of their valves is this tiny little clip. And I think it's designed, obviously it has a very simple purpose and that's to keep the quarter turn from moving and they did not include any instructions oh i see yeah so it basically keeps the valve from getting pushed up something like that i keep trying different positions here there we go that one makes sense it slides over this little handle and then kind of behind that valve pretty tough to see that little guy in there and that keeps this from moving up and it keeps it from being able to rotate of course wouldn't hurt i mean you should be checking oil every time you start the engine right every day but that's uh, a little clip that they provide with the valve all right i think we'll get this one topped up with oil i do have a little bit more maintenance to do on this one but i really want to get the quarter turn on the sawmill before it gets dark all right guys sorry for the dimming light, I got sidetracked by some other maintenance on the backhoe. All I have to say is the hydraulic filter on that machine is a nightmare. So let's see if we can get this drain plug on the sawmill real quick. It looks like I'm going to have to delay some of this maintenance to tomorrow. But I really want to know if this, this valve is worth it. So the sawmill is kind of unique because it already has this drain hose. I guess the sawmill really wouldn't be a great candidate for this quarter turn valve. In fact, it's looking to me like uh, Woodmiser puts a nut on this uh, hose extension that they already install. So they're kind of on it already. And I remembered that. I remember the oil here being not messy at all. It's nothing to hold a container right here and drain that oil. So. I don't really need to change the oil right now on the sawmill, but I like the idea of this because it's a no tool oil change. You simply turn the valve a quarter turn and you're good to go. So you don't need tools. I guess I'm just being fussy. So maybe, maybe we'll just bag this idea, but maybe somebody out there will benefit from this idea because if you're like this, you've got this drain plug way up in there, which Woodmiser already kind of, you know, solved this problem for us. I could totally see this valve being a big time saver and a lifesaver. I think what I might do is just find an adapter for that hose so I can just put this quarter turn valve straight onto that hose. That makes even more sense. And then I don't really even need to put a hose on it because that's already there, but that allows me to take advantage of the quarter turn feature. Oh, I'm losing daylight fast. This maintenance is taking you longer than I expected. This morning obviously wasn't a planned experience slaughtering the pigs. We're very thankful for that and excited maybe to join them in a couple of days to finish up those meats. So I think I'm going to keep going at this backhoe like crazy. I've still got a long way to go. I've got some greasing and things that I want to catch up on. Thanks for joining us guys. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.